for the time. Tea time. Yeah. This is tea time. Yeah. Making a difference. One cup at a time. Tea time. So be sure to grab your tea, grab a seat, and tune in to Miss Liz. Tea time. Tea time. Making a difference. One cup at a time. Well, welcome everybody. It is evening tea time and this is the last tea time of February. Can you imagine? We've already done January, February and we're going into March. I can't believe it. Uh, but I have the incredible Dr. Catherine Hayes here and we're going to be talking about her new book that was released on Tuesday and we're going to share that. We're going to share all the good stuff that she does, the leadership and all of that. And we're going to share a different type of tea tonight. We're going to share trustworthy, eager to laugh and attentive to detail. That's right. That's the type of tea we're serving tonight with all of you guys. So if you haven't subscribed to Miss Liz's YouTube channel, please run over and subscribe to Miss Liz's YouTube. Ring that little doorbell and you'll be notified every time there's a new tea time going up. And you can watch them at your own pace, in your home, in your car, at your office. You just never know. Or you could even watch it at the mall. Grab some people and chill out that way, right? Because that's what Miss Liz does. Miss Liz just brings a fun kind of cup of tea all the time to you guys. So before we get started, we're going to do a disclaimer and we're going to do some bio of Dr. Catherine Hayes. And then we're going to get Catherine in here and we're going to spill some tea with you guys. So disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Time Live Show. Miss Liz, myself, is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, may bring forward dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing. All Tea Time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment in taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It is significant to know that this show is engaging in discussion forums only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Ms. Liz, through my email at bookingmisliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in tonight's show in any aspect, I myself, Ms. Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect those wishes and we'll see you at a later date later date and time. Again, all tea time shows are done on Thursday, 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every week. And if you see tea time on a Monday or Tuesday, it's a rescheduled tea time or it's a returning guest because some guests like to come back for a second cup of tea. So now a little bit on my guest. Who is Catherine? She's an author, a speaker, an education, ed educational consultant and editor. Catherine Hutchins Hayes is e e ed Dot D has had her hand in leadership for many years. She loves speaking to groups and delivering messages with a quick wit and real life stories. Catherine is a freelance writer, content editor, and a writing coach for Iron Steam Media and a sensitivity reader for sensitivity between the lines. She is a review, review board member and a contribution to Ink Spires, an online magazine for Christian writers, and her writing has been published in Guideposts. Her work, in, her work and art is distinguished by awards, including the New York Mayor's Contribution to the Arts, Outstanding Residence Artists of Arizona, and the Foundation Awards, and the Blue Ridge Mountain Christian Writers Conference 2016, 2019, and 2021. She is a member of the Ward Weavers International and serves as an online chapter president and mentor. She belongs to the FWA, Florida's Writers Association, the ACFW, American Christian Fiction Writers, CWOC, Crime Writers of Color, ASWA, Advanced Writers and Speakers Association, and AAS, American Association of School Administrators. She serves on the board of the not of the nonprofit organization Submersion 14 and is an art instructor for the nonprofit organization Light for the Future. Catherine hosts the podcast Murder Mystery and Mayhem 
laced with more mortality. Morality, I think it is. She has authored a Christian Bible study for women and is currently working on the sequel of her general market thriller novel. As a trainer of trainers, Catherine believes there are many ways to do things well, but only one way to do God's will right. Catherine flourishes in an educational and Bible, biblical dis, discipline ship. Her sweet spot of, or zone of genius has evolved from a career spanning 20 years in education and both children and women ministry. Catherine Moore's and transitioned into an educational consultant for chapter schools, homes, homeschool programs and churches that led up program development, growth facilities, and public relations, quickly identifying holes and problems areas in these projects, developing strategic planning and team building. Catherine combines over 20 years of experience into her current consulting business. Catherine provides exec, executive level accountability so you and your organization can get the attention to detail they deserve, and you start ex excelling in a healthy, productive work environment. Now, the reason that I read all of Catherine's bio to you guys is because she's an incredible lady. And sometimes, you know, we just got to take those extra minutes just to get it all out there. So I'm going to get Dr. Catherine in here, and we're going to spill some tea. Welcome, Dr. Catherine. Hey, Liz. So I love your intro. Oh, my goodness. We're voice can you hear me yes i can hear you awesome <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i love your, your music and your intro oh my gosh it is so wonderful that is done by the incredible shadow god he created it and he was also a tea time guest back in season one so if you all want a little intro you can check him out because he does amazing work as well yeah that's fantastic so, Catherine, I want to get into who you were as a little girl. We know who you were as a grown woman, but we want to know who you were as a little guy. Oh, what a fun question. I, I was, lots of people don't believe this, but I was really shy. I was extremely shy uh, and absolutely loved art. I painted, I sculpted, I did all kinds of things, revolving art. And I realized I was encouraged by my parents because my parents were really great artists. It wasn't their career, but my father sketched. He uh, he was really good at people, which I'm good at. And my mother was great at landscapes. Um, and so, so you would find me doing lots of artwork and you would find me writing. I, I had, I was the oldest of five. And so I had a journal and I wrote poetry and I realized that writing poetry was a more secretive. I could I could express myself and not worry about one of my younger siblings breaking into my journal or my diary. Okay, <laughs> and I loved uh, I loved playing baseball. I was kind of a tomboy in a skirt, um, and I say skirt because my parents were very old school and strict, and so they just believed that girls should wear skirts all the time. That's a whole long story, and and so. But I was out there, and I was out there playing baseball and um, handball. I don't, I don't know if people know a lot about handball. Um, and I was playing jump rope and and having a lot of fun. And I was a foodie from when I was re really young. My my parents allowed me to start preparing full full blown meals at eleven, and I never stopped. Oh, wow. So yeah, so there there's there's Catherine's childhood really shy really, <laughs> uh, really didn't like to speak up in, in class, but I, I wasn't, I was in a gifted program. I, I was complaining to my husband the other day. I'm like, I could have been maybe farther in life. I was supposed to be skipped twice. And my parents were like, no, <laughs> <laughs> but they, they knew what they were doing. Cause I was just prop I was just immature in other ways. So, um, and and they knew how shy I was, so it probably would it probably maybe would not have been good for me. Yeah. See, I always like to give my listeners a little bit of who we are as little guys, right? Because it usually embeds 
what we are as adults, right? It, it, it gives us a little flavor of what we're going to be as adults. Like if we grow up and we don't have a voice and we grow up to be speakers, you know what I mean? That you, you said it yourself, you were a shy person. Now look who you are. You're out there, you're speaking, you're sharing, you're being that, that role model, right? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. that, and, and, and knowing us as little children shows us the inner child as well. And it also brings out character of how we act, how we, you know, look at things in life. Yeah. And we, we talked about this to before we went live about being that Hallmark girl for Christmas time and Valentine's, but then that little tomboy right the rest of the time. And I'm like that too. I'm like, okay, guys, you get a little bit of homework out of me, but yeah. the rest is um, like, I like the crime. And yeah. that's what we're going to talk about tonight is we're going to talk about your book. So you have the book there, correct? Oh, did I lose you for a second? I think there might be some technical difficulties. But she has this amazing book that came out on Tuesday. It's called A Fifth of A Fifth of the Story. And we're going to get into that. Uh, she might be having some technical difficulties. We're just going to see if she's okay. Uh, but again, if you if you want to know more about Kath. Oh, are you there, Catherine? Yes. Awesome. Yeah, I think he froze for a few seconds. Okay. I was yeah. just about to check on you. I was just like, oh, well, let's go check on her. Yeah. So, Catherine, I want to get into the book. Uh, mm -hmm. I was sharing with the listeners that you wrote this incredible book that came out on Tuesday mm -hmm. called The Fifth of the Story. So do you want to share a little bit about this book? And do you have the book there so people can see yeah. it? Yeah, I have it right here. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's... um. I'm super excited about the cover, you know, um, it just, it just really sums up a lot about what the book is about. You know, you've got my main guy on the cover here, Brock O'Reilly. You've got the white house in the background. You've got his special agent badge on here. Um, uh, and it just, it just seems exciting, which is fun for me because it's a, it's a, it's a rocky ride from start to finish in, in this book. And what I like about it is um, it there are layers to it. So the char so even though I'm not a guy, <laughs> my main character is a guy, and so are his two his two best friends. And it tells a story about their friendship, their um, jobs as CIA agents, the things that happened to them that that force them to to reexamine what they do. Who, who who they should be loyal to, um, what the breaches in the intelligence agencies mean for their relationship, mean for their safety, and even the safety of the country. And But then it, it's deeper than that because it delves into the backstory of Brock O'Reilly, who he is, his childhood, and how it impacted him and, and how he interacts with other people and his deepest fears about about some of the things in his childhood being revealed. And then um, then his uh, his buddies, they all have their own backstories. There are things that the things that they carry, secrets they carry, dreams they have, and those are slowly are unraveled as the action ramps up. So Catherine, do you know these people personally? Yes and no. So this is a <laughs> fictitious story. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, yeah. it's a fictitious story but i've i've had good friends call me up or text me and be like is this i think that this person is your brother or i think this person is so and so or is this a little of you and your family and there are little there are little easter eggs thrown throughout you know put in the book um yes the my brother very much is one of is very much one of the characters like his his there's his personality if you knew him you would see his personality shine through one of the characters um and there is homage to the family like my my mother's family was um or is portuguese uh, slash jamaican uh with lots of other mixtures in between and some of that is discussed. Some, one of the characters' backgrounds uh, is, is discussed and thrown in there. So, 
And then some of the stories, there are snippets of things that have happened um, in real in real life, but I've had to change the, you know, where it took place, the dates, the times, of course, everybody involved. Because my husband, he worked, he worked for uh, an intelligence agency and they were declassified things he was able to share with me where I could take it and fictionalize it. So there are some true to, to the book and then there are some that are fiction, right? Yeah. So the, so the truths in the book are some of our, some of the breaches in our, our highest security um, intelligence ages agencies. So some of that is real. And, and, and also there are, these terrorist organizations that are talked about, those are real things that, that, that have, that are happening in real time in our country. And, and so, and that are, and then even outside uh, countries that influence us, you know, we see with this, um, with these uh, ads, right. We found that so many of them were f false trying to pit uh, people of, you know, ethnicities against each other, trying to incite racism, trying to incite uh, one political party against another par political party. And it gets to be even more concerning with the use of AI and how advanced it can be and how you know, you, we don't know who to trust and who's telling the truth. So all of those things are, are uh, you know, kind of uh, sewed in between the pages of, the, of this book. It's amazing that you brought up the AI because the guest this afternoon, Jimmy Fritz, he brought up the AI as well on how destructive it is, you know, and how much corruption it's causing because we have these deep fakes, right? That are, they can be anybody, they can voice anybody, they can, you know, cause commotion, break up relationships, break up families. Like there's so much that we don't understand, but the AI is also good because it also pushes you to ask the question. And I had a yeah. guest, I believe, in the beginning of last year, um, Yvonne Gamel, and and she said that just question it, keep questioning it, don't don't accept the results that it gives you, keep re yeah. re asking it, and keep getting it and pushing it. So, with this right. book that you wrote, uh, Catherine, what why uh, what was the reason for writing the book? Was it debris awareness? Well, the reason for for writing the book is because there there are certain things that I would I, I wanted to talk about. I, I wanted to talk about uh, my concerns about racism, my concern my concerns about intolerance for one another, or my concern about friendship, fractured relationships, and so there's so much of me in that book, but. It's put. It's it's wrapped up in a story that's engaging, that you that's interesting. Uh, from time to time, I, I can't. You know, first of all, when you get your book in your hand, you're like, wow, I can't believe it's here. And you're reading through it, and you're like, oh my gosh, like this is, this is really, uh, this is really cool. I like the way that this is done. And I knew that if I wanted to, to share this, my concerns with people, I couldn't just. Put it out there. It, it, I'd sound like someone on a soapbox. I'd sound preachy, but I wanted to put it in a way that was engaging, where people would fall in love with the characters, fall in love with the storyline, and be and and they would start asking themselves some some hard questions. First of all, I want them to go and research and see: is that really happening? Is that are these organizations really real? Uh, could this did this happen, or could this happen? And I want them to do that. But then I also want them to think about their friendships, their relationships. Like, are there are there stereotypes that we have that are deeply embedded in so many of us? There's, there's sometimes they're so subtle and sneaky that we don't catch them until something happens. Yeah. Are, are there ways that I'm engaging with people who are not like me, and that it's that's preventing me from going deeper or truly accepting them? So it's, it's all those things. My three main characters are are white guys. And people might be like, well, why did you, you don't look like a white guy. Why did you write from that perspective? Well, <laughs> well you know well, what? Sometimes it's better. Yeah. <laughs> and that's more the, engaging because a woman is expressing it like, <laughs> you know, better detail. Yeah. yeah. 
And, and part of that was me saying, I, you know what? Um, I want to defy the odds. I don't want to be pegged into to a, I don't want to be pegged into one one stereotyp, stereotypical role. A lot of times I go to writers conference and I remember when I'd be pitching stuff and if people pay, um, agents would ask me, oh, do you have urban fiction? Like, no, I don't know anything about urban fiction. <laughs> You're like, I, I, if I don't know about it, I'm not speaking about it. <laughs> I'm sure it's awesome. But it's just not me. Like, why? And I actually had to go into research urban fiction. I said, oh, it's because they're looking at me as a black and brown person. And they're they're assuming I would know all about that. And I'd be able to write about that. No, that's not, that's not me. Yeah. Uh, well, that's really interesting that you brought that word assuming uh, in. Because that's what a lot is being done in today's world. A lot of assumptions are being made about people and cultures mm -hmm. and racism and you know, we're being embedded with division. We're being embedded with corporate, you know, corporate uh, families turned against families. You, you know, there's so much going on. And I love that you said that, Catherine, to go out and research. You know, when you read a book mm -hmm. and you want to know if it's true or if it's not true, go out and research yeah. it. Like, do your homework. Right. Don't just grab a book and read it and then say, oh, I read another book. Oh, I read another book. You know? actually yeah. read it and then reach out to the writer and say you know what oh i like that you brought that in i like that you went there you know what i mean we have to have that connection yeah. and relationships as well with our writers and novelists mm -hmm. like you know like you're writing a book yes it's nice that you leave a review but actually reach out to uh, the writers and say hey why'd you go that way why didn't you go the other way yeah. like yeah. you know what made you go that way mm -hmm. and i think that's yeah. what crime is right when you're trying yes. to solve a crime case is why right. did they go that way when we all think they should have went this way right right yeah oh why did they do that like what led them to do and you know not that we ever justify people's bad behavior but it does help when we dig deeper and we say we see oh my okay they were raised this way or this happened even my antagonist in the book I really liked him. I hated that he was such a bad guy. <laughs> and his backstory, <laughs> his backstory, I really loved him. I mean, I, I hated that. I hated that he died. But um, I hope that's not, you know, <laughs> I hope I'm not spilling too much tea if, you, if you're planning to read the book. But um, it's not an Easter egg, guys. Go grab a copy. <laughs> <laughs> but he has such a rich backstory. You're like, well, goodness you know he he it's the way he was raised it's and then and so there's that there's that fun of of putting all that stuff into a book that's fictional but yet real to you because of the things that you experienced yeah so Catherine how long did it take you to write this book that's a sad question um oh. <laughs> So th this <laughs> we're having sad tea tonight. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's, it's a sad question because the, the book I have been working on this book for so for so many years. I want to say like 15 years. But the only thing that stayed the same was the title. Um, what happened is I had to have a, a real big girl talk with myself about this book. And I realized uh of like 2019, if something really wrong with it, what should I do? And and I I hired a, an editor to go oh, to go through it, and they gave me some really hard feedback that I needed to hear, and I began working with a mentor, and he he was working to help fix the book, and it was going along fine until chapter five, and he was like, why are you writing this particular book? who are you? And he asked to see my resume. And, and he, he had some conversations with me and he said, I really don't feel like this is a book you want to write. He goes, why don't you just go for it? Just go for the book you've always wanted to write. And, and he's like, you have this background, you have access to your husband's background. Why have you not thought about writing that? And I had such freedom and I, I wrote a book on the fly in about 10 months. And so by 2020, it was ready. But we know, and, and thank goodness it was it was picked up in 20, 
21. This is this. If those of you are, are thinking you're just going to write a breakout novel, it's just going to get published in, in six months. <laughs> it doesn't work that way, guys. Me. Well, for some that's people, it may, but that's not the real life, guys. Um, Writing a book takes time. Yeah. So finally, it was picked up in 2021, uh, but they weren't they weren't able to to um, publish it until 2024. So. That happened sometimes. I was just grateful to to um, be published traditionally. And what I did was I wrote and wrote and wrote and built my platform during that time. And so I wrote this the prequel to this book. And I am also working on the the next the next installations of on this book. Well, I'm kind of glad that you shared that, Catherine, because for anybody that's writing a book and they think it's just like you got a magic wand and boom, it, boom, it happens. No, yeah. there are things that, you know, put on pause. Sometimes the covers need to be changed. Sometimes the editing, like you said, like hard feedback, right? And as yeah. the writer, you're like, well, this is my book and I'm going to write it this way. And, you know, um, I'm always open for feedback, whether it's yeah. good or bad, because feedback actually helps a writer look at a different perspective sometimes that we might not have seen had we not gotten that feedback. Right. right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So good. Mm -hmm. So this book came out on Tuesday and they mm -hmm. can get this book. Where can they get this book, Catherine? So they can get it on Amazon, which, you know, the authors need that need Amazon because it really helps in, in your rankings and all of that. And the reviews really help. So you can get it on, on Amazon, you can get it on barnesandnoble.com and also uh, directly through the publisher, which is Endgame Press. Awesome. So I want to get into your tea now, Catherine, because you gave me some, you gave me an interesting tea. Oh. All of my guests give me these words, but your tea is different and I want to get into it because you gave me trustworthy, eager to laugh and attentive to detail. And as I was reading your bio, yeah. I was like, bingo, bingo, bingo. Like I was understanding why you gave me those words. But for my listeners, they might not understand why you gave me those words. So we're going to go through the words and we're going to understand your tea a little bit more. We're going to get a little deeper in your tea. So we're going to yeah. start off with your tea. You gave me the word trustworthy. Yeah. So, so what, what does that mean to you? So trustworthy was something I really had to learn. And I had a great example in my parents. I talk about my parents a lot because you didn't know it then when you were being raised, you're like, oh, my parents are so this, they're so straight. Uh, but they were doing a fantastic job in showing me what, what, what it was to, to be trustworthy. And one thing about my, especially my mother, we nick, people nicknamed her the vault. If you told her something, it was never coming out. We had, I had friends that confided in my mom about things she never told me. I mean, even even <laughs> to her dying day, she never disclosed what they discussed with her. And my parents, they were such incredible keepers of secrets. They knew so much. People people loved them and trust them. And uh, they, they would, um, for instance, they sheltered a couple of women who were abused by their husbands. I remember one time we had to, we had to use the back door for the house. We had to check the street for this certain car because they were uh, sheltering her until they, they could get her to safety. They were actually helping her get out of the country because her husband was so dangerous. Um, and, and those kinds of things I saw growing up. And then later on, as I became a teacher and then a principal, I saw how important it was to be trustworthy. I needed to be that person that my parents were for their friends and family members to students, for my colleagues, for um, the teachers, the staff that I work with. There are people that it's it's that came to work that were so burdened with other things that were going on. So I knew a lot about what were, what was happening in their personal lives, and I realized how important it was to be trustworthy. To if I said I was going to do something, to follow through, to never discuss their personal business, uh, even when it was even when it would hurt me more than anything else. But that's it. That's trustworthy and why I feel that's so important in a nutshell. So Catherine, you just mentioned that you're a teacher and a principal. So how do your students feel about this book? 
No, I was a teacher. I was a principal. I left. I left that. I um, left by accident uh, about sixteen-ish years ago. Uh, about fifteen years ago, I left to after I had my last child. I left just to experiment and see if I could get something published, if I could flourish in the publishing world. It was an experiment. I was only supposed to try it out for a year, and then it went to two years, and then then it was no turning back. I just ended up working full-time in the publishing industry. And so I, I have not been a principal in 15 years. Wouldn't it be cool if one of your students from back then bought the book and reached out to you and said, hey, Mrs. Hayes, They're like I read your book. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be awesome. And that is quite possible because of social media. Uh, Many of my former students have reached out to me. I'm friends with them on various social media platforms. So that very well could happen. You know, I follow them. I see, you know, I see what's going on with their lives. And I, and so, so many of them have reached, reached um, out to me and connected with me. So that could happen. And that would well, be exciting. Beautiful. That is so cool. <laughs> so now I'm going to get into your E and you said eager to laugh. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, why that? <laughs> I feel like you're a lot of fun to be with. Like I could see us laughing a good time, you know, watching a good crime movie and we're just giggling away trying to yeah. figure out why they took the left side instead of the right side. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I have a really good sense of humor, a quirky sense of humor. Um, very inappropriate sometimes. You know, sometimes I'm finding the <laughs> craziest things to laugh at, like hysterical. Like I have to excuse myself at funerals. Um, uh, you know, weddings, I mean, you know, just it's church. Um, and that was that. And it started, it started from really young. Just, I knew how to mimic people really well. I could mimic you. I could, uh, I could also, um, I could also write a song about you. I was musical, so I played the piano and I can write a jingle about you. Um, I could draw, you know. So in church, sometimes I would have my entire row of friends cracking up because we're supposed to be really studious and serious. And I am writing cartoons on the, the different pastors that are up there speaking or the different congregation members. And I just have them looking really silly. So, and my thing is, it's just important not to take ourselves too seriously. I poke, I poke more fun at myself than anyone else. I put it out there. I put my stuff out there. Like I, I don't hide from the fact that I've been married three times. This is my third marriage. And I tell people, this is my favorite husband. We've been married 17 years. <laughs> I, I, you know, third time's a charm. So I will make tons of fun of myself. I think that I think that's really fun, Catherine, because you know we're life is so serious, right? We gotta have fun, mm -hmm. and I could see you sitting in church and just giggling, and, and you know, uh, I I do that when I'm in a in, in an environment that I'm really tense. Then I'll just think these crazy thoughts, and then I just start laughing, and I'm just like, I shouldn't be doing this right now, but you know, we I think we just have to do that, right? We have to have fun. We have to just be different. You know, yes. be themselves. Uh, and your A was attentive to detail. Uh -huh. So you're really attentive to detail because it shows in your bio. It shows that you've paid attention and really seen things, right? Yes. Yeah. I, so I've always been inquisitive, uh, maybe annoying to people. My friends would always say, you just, why do you ask so many questions? And my parents, too, they were like, oh, my gosh, like, how many questions are you going to ask about this? Um, thank goodness they were they were patient with me. But I just love details. I feel like details matter. And I try to really pay attention to people, to what's important to them, um, their favorite, you know, even with your children, their favorite colors, their favorite foods, what bothers them. And I think details really matter because we live in a world where people are so caught up with themselves or distractions or whatever, um, that maybe it's maybe a lot of us are, are missing being attentive to yeah. 
the details, not just in our lives. Like, I think that's important. Like I, I am a nerd. Like, yes, I have a planner. I have a to-do list every day, just about, um, I am that person. I live by sticky notes and all of that. But I, I feel it's even more important to be attentive to other people, attentive to uh, their mood, what's going on with them, and caring about what is going on with that with the with that person. I, I, we don't like you said we don't pay attention, right? We're so mm -hmm. much in a rush. We're so much of in the moment that yeah. we're not paying attention to the little details, right? You know, we need to slow down and pause. And that's what tea is all about, right? We just yeah. sit, reflect, recharge, and yeah. release, right? So we just kind of spill a nice little flow. And then we watch and we say, well, is anybody going to clean that mess up? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no. Nobody's going to clean that mess up. Oh, okay. Do I go clean that mess or do I make a bigger mess for somebody to come clean it? Like, yeah. you know, you, yeah. you, you put a little bit out to see what you can get back, you know? Mm -hmm. And then you put a little bit more out and you see what comes back. Yeah. And, and that's what tea is all about, right? And that's what your tea is. Your tea is really flowing because mm -hmm. the trustworthy trust is a really hard thing for, for people who have been betrayed and stuff like yeah. that, yeah. you know? So yeah. for you to give me that word trustworthy, I was like, Oh, this is going to be a nice tea. This is going to be a nice flow. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. 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 Loyalty, you know, and a, a lot of what's in my book, it, it's about themes of loyalty because I, it bothers me how disloyal people can be. And I've, I'm that, I really try to be a loyal friend. I really do. And I, I really try to be there even for the good times, the bad times, um, when it's not convenient. I try to be that, that friend. Yeah. And I, it, it's hard in today's world because you just don't know who to trust. It's true. Know? It's so true. Um, and I think your book is going to give that. It's going to give you that story of, you know, the building of a relationship and how a relationship falls apart and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give away a little bit too much because I've been doing a little bit of reading and I don't want to kind of. Yeah. But I, I highly suggest everybody go out and get a copy, you know, mm -hmm. because if you're that girl that's a hallmark on Christmas and Valentine's, but you're that crime girl <laughs> all the rest of the time, you want this book. <laughs> Yes, you do. You want this. It's it's so fun. And listen, please let it be worth my while. I mean, the whole time I was I was worried that the FBI was going to come knocking on my door because of my Google searching. Like, I mean, how many times was I going to Google how to, how to kill someone? It was just, you know, with poison, with how do you kill someone and try to get away with it at a hospital? You know, I, I was concerned. My husband's like, you know, we got to be prepared if the FBI comes here. Right. <laughs> well, then good old search engines are always watching us eh? good old google he's watching us you know that big brother has got us like but that, that's intense Catherine. Yeah. like because this is research right thank god you have the book because then of course they're going to be like well what are you doing here yeah exactly yeah <laughs> so what was the the biggest encouragement for you to get this book out there like to get this story out there who pushed you? Like, was it your spouse? Was it your children? Was it your inner child that said, let's just do it? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, there's one that I'm really, there's now I have lots of shortcomings. That's for sure. But I, I am someone who's very tenacious and I'm very, I love goals and I like to really work after my goals. I'm I, like, I said, I'm a complete nerd. I've got like a vision board, you know, uh, <laughs> The whole nine. Um, and so it comes to, you said, who is there for me and how, who helped me? Um, I would have to say my, even, even though my parents have gone on to heaven. Um, and, and in fact, my mother died in the, at the tail end of me writing this book. And my brother died eight weeks before that. Um, I feel like they're, they're all there, you know, cheering me on. Uh, they they were so supportive and and um, really believing in, in in my gift and I should pursue this and and all of that and then my husband and my husband and children very supportive and without my husband's support it would have been hard to pull off because he was the one that was saying hey you you go ahead and you take this time to explore and every year I was like I don't know should I go back and he's like no just keep on you do you're making progress 
And so that was a blessing. And then I have a core group of very good friends. Uh, I'm not, it's not that they are maybe even into what I write. It's not that I can call them up and say, hey, what do you think about this chapter? It's not that. It's just that they're there for you saying, I'm proud of you. You can do it. You know, um, there for you to recharge your batteries. You, you're not even talking about books. You're, you're talking about what's going on in your personal life. So all of those things you treasure. Even my church family has been, been behind this. Like they, they have been wonderful and supportive, praying for the project to come to completion. So it's, it's not me by myself, for sure. It, it, it took a village and it will continue to take a village. <laughs> and that's what we need, right? We need that support. We need that person, whether it's a spouse, a community, the church, you know, a friend, a family member, you know, we need that support to just keep saying, you know what? No, no, you got this. Come on. Yeah. Keep, keep on track, like keep on the goal, you know, and I can vision a vision board, like, you know, have you ever done a vision board, Catherine? where you put something on the vision board and then you look at it and you're like, what? I don't want to go there. I don't want to do that. Why is this on here? Yeah. Or sometimes your dreams scare you. Like this vision board that I have back here, the first time I put it together, I said, this is too big. It, and I threw it in the garbage and my kids found it when they came home from school and they were like, mom, how could you throw your dreams in the garbage? And they just read me the riot act. They were like, you would be so upset with us if we ever did this. You have to, you know, write the vision and make it plain. I'm like, oh, those are my words. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Isn't that, you know, that's scary when our kids use our own words on us, right? And they're yeah. like, what are you doing? Like, you wouldn't want us to do it. Exactly. Yeah. And the reason I asked you that, Catherine, is because, you know, sometimes our dreams do get so big that they scare us. Yeah. You yeah. know? And we, we, we have this vision and this dream and we're like, I don't know if I can do it. It's like a crime story, right? Yeah. It's like, can I really do it? Can I yeah. really get away with it? Can I, you yeah. know, <laughs> maybe FBI is going to be after Miss Liz and get <laughs> <laughs> No, we're not plotting anything. We're just talking about a good old book here that we all, that I'm encouraging everybody else to go and get it. Right. But yeah. our dreams sometimes scare the living crap out of us and we're yeah. we want to get to the point where we're just like it's not going to happen throw it away mm -hmm. yeah you no know, that's it's not about giving up it's just it's too scary i can't mm -hmm. do it it's mm -hmm. like jumping from a plane right I, I can't do it like and then all of a sudden you know you're, you're parachuting from a plane you're like what am i doing as you're falling right <laughs> <laughs> it's true. yes it's, it's so true uh what a good point you're absolutely right there they're often dreams that that terrify me, yeah. Because I because some of my dreams, um, they're not just about me. They they impact other people. I dream about what I can do for other people. That's a big part of my out of my heart. I'm heavily associated with um, a couple of missions, and I I dream about wow, wow I wish I could I, I wish I could build this or do this, and it's so huge that it is terrifying. I'm like, what are you thinking about? You can't do that. So it's this inner battle that you constantly go through when you dream big. Yeah. Well, it goes back to that little girl, right? When we started the show, you said you were that shy girl. So yeah. how dare the shy girl want to dream big, right? To have exactly. that big thought, you know, yeah. that, that light coming her way when I'm that shy little girl in the corner. And that's right. why I always do that question with all my guests is who they were as a little kid, because you eventually get the story. You eventually get the tea out of them and you see that, you know, but you did it, Catherine and congratulations. Like, you know, you're that, you're that writer that did it. Yeah. And there's so many writers out there that say, I want to write a book. I want to do this. And they don't do it. Right. Yeah. That's it's, true. <laughs> you know, so I am, I, like I said, like I was looking forward to this tea time because I, I, I did some little sneaking and I was like, Oh, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and my spouse was like, what are you? I'm just like, oh, no, no. Like this book, I need this book. Like, Aww. so, yeah. And I, I, I like the flow of the book. Mm. I just like the little pivots and the little, the little egg shells that you left out all over mm -hmm. the place. Like if people yeah. go and check it out, just even the write-ups on, on Google about the book, want you to go and get the book. 
because I'm just like, did the FBI and CIA really go to her house? They like, <laughs> did, did she know them? Like, did she work for them? Like, you know, because just putting that in there gets the reader engaged and wanting to know, like, did Catherine really work with people like this? Did, you know, <laughs> you have those questions, right? Yeah. And that's what I was. I was like, did she work with them? Is she a CIA agent? Like, do I yeah. have an FBI agent coming? Like, <laughs> no, no. I live vicariously through my husband. That that's really what happened. Yeah. So, Catherine, I want to get into the one word. I asked you one word to describe yourself. Do you remember what the word was that you gave me? Yeah, vivacious. Do you, do you want to tell everybody why? Vivacious is such a fun word. It's so strong, right, and powerful. And I think it sums up who I am. Vivacious sounds like someone who's who's full of life, um, who's full of energy, who's fun, who's funny, um, tenacious. I think it just it kind of sums up who I am in one word. That's a that's a great word uh, for me. I like it. It, it. it It's a fun word. And we don't get that word. Usually get I'm strong and beautiful and pretty. And this is why I asked this question, because a lot of people are like, that's a hard question, Miss Liz. Why do you ask us that? And yeah. it's because I like to dig deep. I like a deep tea with all of my guests. Yeah. And Catherine, just before we went live, a few minutes even before we got to meet each other, mm -hmm. I you sent me an email saying that you were excited about tonight's tea time. And then I was like, me too. And then I was like, what's your favorite color? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I asked you what your favorite color was. Yeah. <laughs> so the, you gave me a favorite color red. Yeah. So yes. why red? Because it's bold. It's vibrant. It speaks life. Uh, I just, I just really gravitate to the that color. You see, you'll see red in my my home, especially in the my main living area. is It's bold, and it it just it makes me happy to see red. Oh. I like it. Mm -hmm. She's happy. She's eager to laugh. I like it. There's a lot of <laughs> happiness. <laughs> yeah. I want to get into, you also have some other incredible books that I want to get out there. I want the listeners to hear about these books. You have some devotional books that you've written as well that people can find on your website. So yeah. do you want to share a little bit about those books? Yeah, I have some, uh, you know, if you're in a crunch, a, a time crunch and all that, I have some, um, little mini books on my website and they're little eBooks that you can download. And in fact, if people are listening tonight, I, I usually do this. Uh, I will have, um, I will give out a free book for people who, who, who do the, um, there will be a code. It will be miss Liz 2024 and you will be able to download a free eBook. Yeah. As, as being from being a guest, I mean, a guest listener. And oh, so, the, yeah, being a listener, they can get Miss Liz 2024. If they put that code in when they go on the website, they can get a free ebook. Um, the other books, uh, one is God's Little Black Dress for Women, How to Put on the Full Arm of God Without Losing Your Femininity. I wrote that in 2016. Uh, that is like a Bible study and um, book. It's based on the themes of fashion, Coco Chanel all kinds of designers, and somehow I relate it to biblical um, living. Then I have Focus 45 Devotionals to Keep Jesus in the Picture. That just came out December 14th, 2023. I wrote it with several other authors, most of who um, blog with me on my blog. And I have a blog called um, Dressed in God's, Dressing in God's Love. I also run a blog called The Man Cave. Those are guys. I just I just put them on a schedule. I don't write for that. Um, and so this book came out as a result of it. It, it is um, 45 devotionals to help you keep Jesus in the picture. Oh, I love it. You know, we we really need to get close to him. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we, we take our travels away from him sometimes and, and get distracted. Yes. And, and it's, you know, it's going right back to that crime again, because that's what, you know, it's that distraction, right? You know, yeah, that we take ourselves onto a path that maybe is not meant for us. And we need to come back to the other way. 
You know, mm -hmm. we need to take that right curve instead of the left, or we need yeah. to go down the middle once in a while, just to, just to get that reflection back and, and get back close to where we need to be. Uh, yeah. So, so Catherine, what has writing done for you? Writing, it's an outlet. It's also a business. Um, writing is also a way to connect with other people who I may not have been able to get to know or to meet without our connections. And writing is, is so, it's so necessary. It's life, right? We have every day we read, every day uh, something comes, comes in. Even if you're listening to a, a podcast or something like that, somebody had to write that. Some, somebody had to create that script. We listen to an audio book. Of course, someone had to write that first. We listen, we watch a movie, right? Or a TV show. Somebody had to engage by putting that together through writing. So I just, I just believe that writing is fundamental to our existence. And so it, it just breathes life into my existence, into my everyday. Um, and it's become a lifestyle and a business for me. So what message would you like to leave for all of the listeners out there that are looking into writing? That are looking into writing? I, I say go for it. No matter what stage you are at, if someone has said, oh, you can't write, you, you're not good, or if someone says you're amazing, whatever it is, that you should go for it. That if that is a dream for you, that you, you should arm yourself. Now, now you got to get an army, so you, you need your people. I suggest joining critique groups. I highly suggest Word Weavers International. I've belonged to that for several years now. It's amazing. Um, go attend writers' conferences. Um, hone your craft. If you are, if you're into writing cozy mysteries, study everything there is to know about writing cozy mysteries. Take classes. Get a mentor, uh, and work at your craft daily. And if you can't do it daily, they at least give yourself goals where you're, you're going to do certain things to achieve certain goals. But it's really hard to achieve a dream without creating goals because you, you just put it out there and you're not really having a plan. So if you are wanting to be a writer, decide what type of writing you'd like to do, even if it's mixed genre, if you want to, like I do columns, I do blogs, I do nonfiction and fiction, and I do devotionals and thrillers, right? So you can do it, but you have to have a plan and you have to be tenacious and you have to persevere and do the hard work of getting better and making the connections and networking. Absolutely. And and you left some really good <laughs> eggs, eggs, you know, Easter eggs. Yeah. You left some really good points for any of the people that are considering to be a writer, yeah. no matter what you want to write, like, and like Catherine said, you know, whatever genre it is, Give it a try, you yeah. know, and don't be so hard on yourself. Just write, you right. know, write. We just want people to write. Like we want <laughs> writers out there. Yeah. <laughs> we want to encourage everybody to pick up a pen yeah. and just write. Yeah. We don't want you to go away. Don't worry. AI is not going to take over when it comes to writing. We still need real writers. Yeah. Thank you for saying that, Catherine, because that is what we need. We need people to pick up their pens and write because we don't want AI to overtake. We talked about this this afternoon with Jimmy. He said, like, there's so many AI books that are being published every day that is actually burying writers, actual human being writers, because these AIs are overpowering, uh, you know. So we need to pick up our pen. We need to start writing. We need to have that voice on paper. We need to keep it going. I want I want to bring it up just before we wrap up, Catherine. You have a podcast. And I want to mm -hmm. talk about that podcast because I'm a big supporter of other podcasts out there because every podcast brings something different to the table. I bring yeah. tea. She brings a lot of mystery and murder. So talk <laughs> to us a little bit about that podcast and how they can find that. Yeah. Uh, so it's called Murder, Mystery, and Mayhem Laced with Morality. But don't be scared off if that's not what, what you're into. This podcast is it's for three sets of people. They're for experts, okay? People who are experts in the field of murder, mystery, and mayhem. 
there and also in the publishing industry and also we need our readers you know so there are tons of readers that get on here that, because they want to hear the backstory they want to hear the interview of the particular writer that's on and then we also have writers in different stages of the game who are listening to hear what another author has to say or another expert has to say so if you're writing a um, thriller and you are you're all about um, dealing with the CIA or you need to know how how is an autopsy done or what 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 have you I've had a couple of those kinds of experts on there to talk about that and how to create realistic scenes and so on and so forth but it's a fun place for writers and readers and experts and it's it's wonderful for authors because it is free it's not, there are no strings attached right uh, we just asked you to come on and follow our, you know, follow us on on all of our social media, and of course, advertise advertise the show to your particular audience. Um, so that's it. You can listen to it. Um, our, people mostly listen to it on Apple Podcasts, and then it's also on Spotify. It's on Google Podcasts, and then all and there's so many out there. I would be here yeah. forever telling you. So, and it's even stream, you can even listen to it f straight from my um, website. So there are many ways for you to listen to it. Um, it's listened to in, we, we're picked up 38 countries now. Um, and so, and we have a wide range of ages from 18 on until 80 and older. So that's fun. It is, a, a, a podcast is really opened it up to all different ages, right? <laughs> Uh, and macaroon granola, I do see your message. Holy tacos are published books by AI. Yipes. Yes, there is. AI is really taking over. So we really need people to start using your minds and pushing, pushing the paper and pen, you know, because they are coming in strong and we got to push back and stay strong. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. but your podcast is on what day, Catherine? It, it releases every Sunday. Every Sunday. Every, Sunday, every Sunday we have a new release. Mm -hmm. Yep. So sometimes we have a double header. Last season was last year was a very busy year for the podcast, and so we had lots of double features. <laughs> and sometimes we have special features, um, like a, an author is is um, releasing a book. Once in a while, we'll do a special feature for that author on a day other than Sunday. But um, for the most part, it's Sundays. Well, that's good. I can tune in because the podcast for me is Thursday, so I can do the Sunday. Yeah. And I, I, mean, I just love hearing the backstories because you just never know mm -hmm. what causes somebody to commit a crime, right? Right. And then exactly. sometimes you're just like, wow, whoa. You know, yeah. we get a lot of that with crime. So, again, if anybody would like to grab your book, if you'd like to show it again, uh, Catherine, and okay. – and if you'd like to say your website out and spell it out so that the audio listeners can get it. Yeah, it's at um, www.drkatherinehayes.com. -E -E Real simple. Awesome. I really had a pleasure in doing, sitting with you tonight. Like it was so much fun. Yeah, but we, we got a couple more minutes here. So I want to I want to just have some fun for the last two minutes. Sure. So do you have any other plans of writing a second book? Yes. So I have already finished the prequel to this. It's called By the Zeal of Fire. Um, that's unless a, the publisher uh, wants me to change the title. And that is scheduled to come out next year, 2025. And I am right. I'm also working on the next um, set of books. So there are five books in this particular series. Yeah. Awesome. So any final words you'd like to leave the listeners with? Yeah. So, so don't, so the biggest thing that authors face, I feel that I've seen, cause I work with a ton of authors is we, we face um, discouragement. We face isolation. Um, and then we face um, ourselves, right? We can be some of our worst enemies, right? We get into our own heads, we compare ourselves with other authors. We go on their their Instagram pages, or we go on their you know the, their sales or their reviews. And so, just remember that your author journey is your own. So be careful about trying to measure up to other people. Be careful about being cruel to yourself and comparing yourself with other people. 
Uh, and if you get discouraged, you get that rejection letter, right? I, I mean, I get rejection letters all the time. It's just, it's just, sometimes I'm like, I don't remember sending this thing out. Like, wow, okay. <laughs> and other times you're like waiting, like, oh, can't wait to hear. Will they say yes? And then it's a no. And you're like, oh, you know. Uh, so we get lots of rejection. But be kind to yourself. Surround yourself with people who are there for you. It, you know, I have fur babies. Well, I'm down to one now. I'm about to get some more. Um, your fur babies, like I love my fur babies. Uh, I have my cat, and I had a I had a dog and a, another cat that I wrote this. I, I've I've been writing with for years. Um, and if you need to go get a pedicure or a manicure, go for a walk. Take care of yourself spiritually, emotionally, and physically, the whole self, to be a great writer. So, those that would be my advice. Well, thank you so much. Catherine, it was a pleasure having you here and sharing tea and having some laughs and some giggles. And we even had some sad tea, <laughs> sad <laughs> questions, <laughs> you, you know. But I really just want to thank everybody for tuning into Tea Time with Miss Liz because without you listeners and, and guests, I, I could not do this and I could not enjoy myself and spill different types of tea. Uh, again, thank you so much for joining me for Tea Time. Thank you to the listeners. If you're watching a replay, push hashtag replay. Let me know where you're tuning in from because I'd always like to know where you're tuning in from. And if you'd like to see a topic that Miss Liz hasn't touched on yet, let me know. Send me a message. And you can see all these incredible tea times on my YouTube channel. So give that a quick subscribe. And check out Miss Liz's website at www.misslizesteatimes. And we're going to start a new fresh month. We're going into March. So if you want to see who's coming in March, go check out the press release that is on Miss Liz's website. You'll see some incredible guests. And there are amazing guests that are returning. I have four returning guests from season one, two, three, and four. So you'll be surprised to see who's coming back. Also, mm -hmm. I want to give a special shout out to Creative Edge for tonight's guest. Thank you so much, Mickey Mickelson, for connecting me with Dr. Karen, uh, Catherine Hayes. It, it was a pleasure. And we're going to do this all over again, starting in March. So I'll see you guys in March. Enjoy the rest of your February. And we'll be back with some more TEAs coming in March of 2024.